Um, but I wanted to, to, to just say two things. Um, the, number one, uh, let's try to think about education expansively and let's define the education sector as expansively as possible. This is in part prompted by um, the wonderful work that our British colleagues are doing. You know, as I said the other day, you can do almost anything if you push hard within the education sectors in Britain. You cannot bring certain things to the public because of royalty issues. And I don't think we've pushed it to that extent here, but it's an issue we're going to have to come to terms with. As, as Mara just stated quite eloquently, many students never enter a classroom. Um, we're all living longer. Education doesn't end. We're realizing that MIT, long ago with open course, we realized their students come from all across the world. Um, many researchers and investigators are unaffiliated. There's this thing that's um, becoming quite an issue now, which is citizen science. Citizen scientists have always played a significant role in ornithology, in astronomy. You know, Shoemaker Levy, I guess it's Levy was an amateur astronomer. I've seen him speak, but I forgot which one. Mathematics for hundreds of years, and I'm, these are just a few examples. My spouse is a wildlife rehabilitator. This is a field that's made up mostly of working class rural women. They publish a peer-reviewed journal, and a bunch of people have contributed to a peer-reviewed text that Blackwell is publishing. These are minimum wage workers, for the most part, who wouldn't be able to afford to buy the book, but they're going to get an author's copy. And they're the kind of people that need access to the latest and the best educational material. I myself um, was just a beneficiary last year of a Mellon grant through the National Film Preservation Foundation to do the field guide to sponsored films. I needed to do 2,000 ProQuest searches to, um, to pull together detail for my book. I'm not a scholar. I'm not an affiliated scholar. The San Francisco Public Library only gets the times, and they'll cut you off after a while. And they have, I think, a license for one user. Um, many, many situations like that. We know that the educational system is broken in many places. The fixes are parallel. They're not serial. We need to make the basic source materials open and available to all. It's one way to get closer to an even playing field. So I'm hoping that one thing that comes out of this is that we don't make deals that are just for the ed sector. We don't even know what that is right now. And it's elitist and, and potentially ruinous to draw lines. So to lawyers, licensors, and distributors in this room, out of this room, or um, were once in this room, I would hope that we can write language that clears content for education in every form of media, all venues, locations, territories, and contexts. Maybe we can monkey ranch it somehow so that education becomes universal. We need to quit making education a special interest is, is really what I'm saying. Um, and point two, um, this has been a, a tremendous conference. I've learned quite a lot and there's sort of this amazing array of efforts that are proceeding in parallel towards what appears to be a common goal. Um, my question is what is the common goal? Um, many of us, most of us are here to report on particular projects or particular interests that admittedly point in a certain direction and share uh, commonly held assumptions. Um, and many of these projects have reached the execution stage. It's, it's very cool. These are not, you know, demo, demo proofs. But I think that with a few exceptions, most of us are working on details of a very big picture, and I worry that the big objective is receding into the distance. It continues to recede. Um, so this morning, talking with Paul Gerhardt uh, before he left, he said, put it this way, Rick, and he was right. What would, what would we do if we were building public television from scratch today, if this was day one of public television, or as they call it in England, public service broadcasting, which is different and better. Could we build a TV service that was totally open to all from day one? And then at the same time, could we visualize and execute the parallel project, which is to free everything that's ever been made? Um, more of us probably want to free archives than to keep them locked up. Um, but we are all waiting for permission. And I would submit that no great leap forward has ever occurred with permission from everybody involved. It just doesn't happen. Um, somebody's going to have to disobey and let the world catch up as best as it can. And perhaps a lot of institutions would consider disobedience 
at the same time so they you know, walk together. Um, to free everything that we call ETV and PTV is a cultural and social act of the highest importance and we need to frame it that way. It's not an academic project, it's not a research grant, it's not a site that reaches just a few hundred thousand people. We're all doing cool stuff, but it's very hard to frame these projects individually as world changing. And we need to get the kind of attention, I said a little bit about this this morning, that Google got when it said in 04 that it's going to scan books in five great libraries. Front page of the Times, um, major freak out in the research library field, totally changed the agenda, reframed the agenda. That next morning, you know, I, could, I chancellors and, and, and provosts and, and ULs and probably a hundred small schools started fantasizing that they could save a lot of money by closing their stacks, dumping books because it was all going to be on Google. Changed the paradigm and interestingly enough, it seems evident that Google didn't know very much about how it was going to do this at the time of that announcement. Um, and they, they'd only done a few books and they had hardly anything in place in terms of contract, but they threw the gauntlet down to the world, as did YouTube, perhaps not expecting to do so, when it became the world's default media archive, as, uh, as did Napster, which Josh, Josh Nathan pointed out. So why can't we? Um, I've been interested in archival access for a long time and I was just looking for little phrases to, to, to cannibalize um, from my laptop and there's a, a paper that I wrote in 1993 about why we should open up archives. I was not the only one but it's too long and I, I really hope that we could um, maybe find some leaders that are willing to disobey and that's my, my piece. Thank you.